Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, and we resume our study in verse 39. So get your Bible, open it up to John, chapter 4. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse, going on five. Actually, this is not the fifth, but I am working on the fifth. And the New Testament is done, the Old Testament up until the book of Ecclesiastes, along with the previous four series are all there for you at the thebibleversebyverse.com, waiting for you to come with your Bible and a hunger for God's word because you don't need anything else. Just choose, click, and listen. Now let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, John 4, 39. <clears throat> and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. Don't ever underestimate the power of your testimony. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have a degree in Bible or anything else to be a good, effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just know that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, that he rose from the dead on the third day, that you have to repent and receive him as Lord and Savior. And if you do that, then just tell others what Jesus did for you. And your own words convey those truths. Just tell them what Jesus did for you. That's witnessing for Christ. And that's what this woman, the Samaritan woman did. And many believed on her as a result of that. So when the woman left Jesus, she had a zeal for Christ because she was spent, she had spent time. She heard the word of God from God himself. So she went into town, spread the news about Jesus, and God used her zeal and her very simple personal testimony of what Jesus did for her. Verse 40. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Unheard of for the Samaritans to ask a Jew to stay with them. They couldn't stand the Jews any more than the Jews could stand the Samaritans. But this was Jesus, and evidently these people got saved. And when you're saved, it doesn't matter what the color of someone's skin is or what their nationality is, what their race is. It just doesn't matter because you find equality and camaraderie in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was strange, though, that they would ask him to stay because of how much the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. The Samaritans hated the Jews, and it was just as strange as that Jesus, as a Jew, was accepted by them. Pretty amazing. And it's true, though, Jesus breaks down barriers, big barriers. He breaks them down. He can bridge any gap that man has created in their little society. So when people are focused on Jesus Christ, barriers disappear. Things that divide and separate disappear when people are focused on Christ. I told a woman this several years ago. I'll never forget it. I said, you know... You don't need secular counsel. You don't need Christian counselors. You don't need psychological counseling if your husband and wife aren't getting along. Aren't getting along. Just both of you focus on Jesus Christ. Put him first, and you'll get along with each other. You might not see eye to eye on everything, but that's okay. You will disagree in a Christian-like way, and you'll still get along just fine. But both of you have to be focused on Jesus and sold out to God. And she gave the typical modern evangelical answer. Oh, Mike, that's too simplistic. Oh, okay. 
we'll just disregard the teaching of scripture and and listen to what the modern psychologists say. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Not with me. Never happened. 41. And many more believed because of his own word. So now they saw and they heard Jesus for themselves. And that's the reason why they believe. Sooner or later, for somebody to be saved, they have to check in to Christ themselves. They can hear the testimony of others, but they have to make a decision for themselves to follow the word of God and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. 42. And said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus spent two days with these Samaritans and whatever he said was enough to convince them that he indeed was the Savior of the world. Jesus is the only way to be saved from sin and eternal hellfire, and he's the only savior for the whole world, as the Bible says right here, the whole world. 43. Now after two days, he departed from there and went into Galilee. So now Jesus leaves and he goes to Galilee, which is in Northern Israel. He's not going to his hometown, Nazareth, though, at least not now, because the last time he went to Nazareth, they tried to kill him because he claimed to be the Messiah. Hometown boy claimed to be the Messiah. They couldn't stomach that, so they tried to kill him. So he's not going back there. And here's why. 44, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. In other words, it's hard to minister to people in your own hometown, in your little circle of people. Once you come to Christ, that's a tough audience. And even Jesus had a hard time. And it's especially hard in members of your own family. You know, Jesus' half-brothers didn't believe in him either until after he was raised from the dead. So that's a tough audience. I don't know why, but it is. 45, then came he, excuse me, then when he came into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went to the feast. So boy, news is really traveling fast concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we see that Jesus, remember he was down in Judea. He had been down for the Passover and evidently did a lot of miracles while he was down there. And there were a lot of people from Galilee that were at that religious festival as well. And they saw Jesus do those miracles. And then they went back home to Galilee and the whole area was talking about Jesus and, and what he was able to do, what he did, what he taught. So they were all talking about him already before he arrived up in Galilee. And they were anxiously waiting for him. So there's a lot of excitement brewing up north. 46, so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain official whose son was sick at Capernaum. There was an official whose son was sick. And this official was a high ranking official in King Herod's court. King Herod was in charge of that district of Israel for the Roman Empire. And so one of the members of his court had a son who was sick. His sick his sick son was in Cana and Jesus was in Capernaum. And the official comes to Capernaum and leaves his son in Cana. 47. When he heard that Jesus came out of Judea into Galilee, he went into him, unto him, and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So this official, who is nameless, God knows him. 
That's the important thing. Had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But he put limits on Jesus. Which he should not have done. And he would not have put those limits on Jesus if he had really known Christ better. He believed Jesus could heal his son. But, and that's why he went to him. He left home and he went to get him. But he didn't believe that Jesus could heal his son from a distance. So he came to Capernaum to get Christ to go back to Cana with him. 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Jesus was not only talking to this official, but to the Jews around him also. You know, the Jews, the Bible says, were always looking for signs and wonders to prove that Jesus was who he said he was. Even after all the miracles that he already did, the Jews still wanted signs and wonders. Jesus wants us to have strong faith in him. And a faith can be encouraged by miracles. That's fine. If you have a faith that can be encouraged by miracles, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But a faith that is dependent on miracles, that's not faith. That's not saving faith. It has to be dependent on the word of God, what God says. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If your faith is in miracles, then watch out because the Bible says that Satan can do lying wonders. And if that's where your faith is, you'll get moved away from Jesus to who's ever doing the next miracle. Even if it's a lying wonder, even if it's fake, doesn't matter. Your faith needs to be in the rock solid word of God. Now, if if that faith in your in the word of God is strengthened or encouraged by miracles, that's fine. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't let it be in miracles. Let it always be in the word of God. 49, the official said unto him, sir, come down, lest my child die. So, like I said, he did not believe that Jesus could heal his son unless he was right there in the same place with him. And he also put another limit on Jesus because he thinks that if his son dies, it'll be too late. He won't be able to do anything for him. So those are two strikes against this official who had faith in Christ, but it certainly was lacking. Understandable at this point. 50, Jesus said unto him, go your way, your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. So you can tell that this official had a heart for truth and a heart for Jesus. Because when Jesus spoke the word to him, he believed. And if you have a heart for truth, you're going to believe the word of God when you read it, when somebody teaches it to you. He didn't believe that Jesus could heal his son unless he was right there with him. But when Jesus said, go your way, your son is healed, he believed him and he went away. So we see that this man's faith was not what it could have been, what it should have been. But he did not really know Christ that well. And Jesus was very good to him. Jesus honored the faith that he did have and taught the man that he could heal somebody from long distance. And the man, to his credit, believed the word of God when he received it from Jesus. And his faith was stretched, and he lived up to it. So he's growing. And he's getting a miracle in the process. 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then inquired he of them, the hour when he began to mend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Your son lives. 
and he himself believed and his whole his whole house it's very good to investigate the works of Jesus Christ it is good that this man investigated the works of Jesus Christ by his questions because now he knows it was the healing word of Christ that healed his son and nothing else because his son was healed at the exact moment that Jesus said, go your way, your son will live. You don't have to worry about investigating Jesus. He'll live up to your investigation. Test him, try him by the word of God. See if he does not live up to it. The closer and the closer somebody investigates the work of God and the word of God, the more their faith is going to be strengthened because God never allows his word, any of his words to fall to the ground. They always accomplish what he wants them to accomplish. 54, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. The first miracle up there was changing the water into wine. And then this one done in Cana um, healed this guy's son. So there we go. Jesus is becoming more and more popular. And we'll pick it up next time in chapter five. And until the next time we are together, you can study all of God's word with me at the Bible, verse by verse.com. And if you'd like to be a part of scripture, verse by verse, you can be. Remember, choose, click and listen from four complete series at the Bible, verse by verse.com. And when you take a break from studying or do it right now, pray for me and God's word, because that makes you an immediate part of this ministry. Write a note, put it on your refrigerator door, reminding you to pray for me and God's word. Pray for me every time you think about it. That makes you a very important part of this ministry. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, verse by verse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture, verse by verse. So long, everyone.